Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick, or The Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a 12-team PPR mock draft from the 7th overall spot using Fantasy Pro's Draft Wizard. The roster position for today's mock are one quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end flex, kicker defense, and six bench spots. We're going to be drafting up against the expert consensus rankings from Fantasy Pros, as well as the composite ADP from ESPN, NFL Sleeper, and RT Sports. This mock draft will be the finale. It is the final mock draft after the 2023 fantasy football season starting tomorrow monday labor day we begin with week number one content we are so close to thursday nfl kickoff chiefs versus the lions so starting monday we'll begin with week one content and then week two week two three four five so on and so forth. I appreciate all the support you guys have shown this fantasy football offseason. If you guys are new to the channel or you have watched some videos before Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It helps me out a ton. If you want to follow me on Twitter, please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. And make sure that you leave a like on today's video as well. So without further ado, let's get into this 12-team PPR mock draft from the 7th overall spot. So the 7th overall spot is relatively interesting because a lot of the time, there are a majority of ways you can go with this pick. Now, normally the first four picks are going to go McCaffrey, Jefferson, Chase, and Eckler in some order. A lot of the time, McCaffrey goes at the 102, Jefferson is the 101. I saw Jefferson fall to the fourth overall pick in a draft I did yesterday, a real draft for money, where I was the fourth overall pick and I got Justin Jefferson, so anything could happen. Tyreek Hill and Amon Ross St. Brown after that. Now, Amon Ross St. Brown going at the 106 just a few days ago would have been unheard of. Now, I'm not taking Amon Ross St. Brown at the 106, but the reason why this happens is because Cooper Cup's injury seems to me, now again, I'm as much of a doctor as Johnny Sins, but this seems serious, right? Early on when Cooper Cup got hurt a couple of weeks ago, it was like, okay, everything's going to be all fine and dandy. He gets hurt. He'll be back a couple of weeks from now. And he does come back, but then he re-aggravated his injury. According to Ian Rappaport, Cooper Cup, who suffered a setback in his recovery from a hamstring injury, is unlikely to suit up before he's 100% healthy, making it unlikely for him to play week one up against the Seattle Seahawks. No shit, Rappaport. Right? This guy is in danger of not just missing week one, missing the first three, four, five games of the season. And hamstring injuries... And re-aggravate, right? This is a situation that is really muddying the water of first rounds in fantasy football. To me, Cooper Cup is a blatant, a clear fade in the first round of fantasy football drafts. I talk about this a lot. You do not want to chase injuries because the injuries are going to find you in a back alley with a lock in a sock, and they're going to beat you over the top of the head. The injuries are going to find you, so don't find them, right? Don't hunt them down like you're craving the hunter, okay? What you want to do is avoid them. So Cooper Cup in the late second, the early third, I can talk myself into that potentially. But in the first round, fuck no, baby. So for me, there are a couple of players under consideration. Travis Kelsey, Saquon Barkley, Stefan Diggs, B. John Robinson, Tony Pollard, and 9-inch Nicholas Chubb. Now, I have Bijan ranked as the highest running back available here. I have him ranked even higher than Austin Eckler, so we're going to go with Bijan Robinson here. Now, is Travis Kelsey a bad pick at the 107? For me in a 12-team league, I don't want to pay that price because I do not believe the positional advantage is as important in a 12-team league versus a 10 or an 18-team league. In a 10 or 18-team league, Every single team you go up against, unless the guy or gal who drafted the team is a certified bozo, every team's going to be stacked. And even the player that drafts the team that isn't that smart in a 10 or 8 team league probably still drafted a decent team because it is hard not to. In a 12 team league, there are going to be teams that four or five weeks in the season don't have a running back that is even halfway decent in their lineup. So 
getting that positional advantage in a 10-team league at tight end to me is a lot more important. I'm not saying you can't take Travis Kelsey at the 107. I'm just not doing it. So after Bijan, Saquon Barkley, Travis Kelsey, Cooper Cup, Stefan Diggs, CD Lamb, Devontae Adams, AJ Brown, Garrett Wilson, Tony Pollard, and 9-inch Nicholas Chubb. Now, I am normally someone that is not double-tapping the running back position to start fantasy football drafts, right? Normally, I go wide receiver, then running back, or running back, then wide receiver. Sometimes I sprinkle in Kelsey, right? Sometimes. But for this draft, I feel like we would be foolish not to double tap running back. We got Bijan, who to me has legitimate running back one upside, who's going to be seeing so many carries in the Atlanta Falcons offense. So why not get another guy that I think could finish as the RB1, and that is Josh Jacobs of the Las Vegas Raiders. Now his ADP is barely moving because these fantasy football platforms are so shit at updating the pre-draft rankings. It takes them so long to adjust to Josh Jacobs signing the franchise tag with the Raiders. Now, I get why a couple weeks ago, people were nervous to draft him in the second or the third round because he could hold out. Now, I was someone that was saying he's not going to hold out. That's Fugazi. He's going to come back. But people still worried. But now, there is literally no reason to worry. He put his signature on the contract. This guy was amazing last season for the Raiders. He's going to get high usage yet again. He got more receptions than in seasons prior. Josh Jacobs is in a great situation to succeed. And we could have potentially just drafted the RB1 and the RB2 in Bijan and Josh Jacobs. I'm taking that every single time. I love Jalen Waddle so much. Jalen Waddle is one of my favorite fantasy football players, right? That crazy upside because of his speed, his one-cut potential where he makes one defender miss and he's going straight to the crib 99 yards, right? The guy's amazing. Simply amazing. But I'm not taking him when Josh Jacobs is on the board, who, again, could easily be the number one running back, a more safe projection, probably a top five running back after Josh Jacobs, Chris Olave, T. Higgins, Derrick Henry, Jalen Waddle, Devontae Smith, Jameer Gibbs, A. A. Ron Jones, Pat Mahomes, Mark Andrews, Josh Allen, Najee Harris, and Calvin Ridley. Sadly, we were not able to get Ridley on this team. Jalen Hurts still available at quarterback. The other tight end that I really like, Mark Andrews, is gone. So both Kelsey and Andrews are gone, and then both Mahomes and Josh Allen. So this is definitely a tough one for me. I don't think you need to go into the draft hunting for a quarterback in the third round. But to me, when a talent like Jalen Hurts falls this deep into the third round, I find it very hard to resist the temptation. I feel like Jalen Hurts is going to finish as the quarterback one this year. And I feel like I got him at a solid discount. Now, every single draft is going to be different. There are going to be drafts where there are five quarterbacks taken before the end of the third round. There are going to be some drafts where all the big three quarterbacks, Allen, Mahomes, and Hurts, are gone in the second round. And there's going to be some drafts where maybe Allen or Mahomes or Hurts make it out of the third round. Quarterbacks and how highly they are selected varies differently from league to league. A lot of times, the more casual players tend to reach for the quarterbacks earlier. You might see Mahomes go inside of the first round of a more casual draft because everyone not only knows who Mahomes is. In real life, the most important player on the field is the quarterback. In fantasy football, that's just not necessarily the case. But Jalen Hurts has that incredible rushing upside. He has a great O-line, and he has two of the best wide receivers, A.J. Brown, as well as Devontae Smith, two of the best receivers in the National Football League. He's got a solid tight end in Dallas Goddard, and he might have one of the best pass-catching running backs in the NFL in Kenneth Gainwell. I'm only kidding. We're talking about DeAndre Swift. So I think Jalen Hurts is in a great situation. Will he be available in the third round in a lot of leagues at the 307? To be honest with you, I would say it's like 50-50. Like I said, some drafts, quarterbacks are flying off the board. Other drafts, owners are more conservative when it comes to drafting quarterbacks. To me, at the 307, that is a wet dream for me for Jalen Hurts. I'm fine missing out on the upper echelon quarterbacks and going for a guy like Tua or Geno Smith or someone a lot later in the draft. That's fine with me. 
But when the value falls, I'm going to take advantage of it. After Jalen Hurts, Ramondre Stevenson, Keenan Allen, Brees Hall, Travis Etienne, Joe Mixon, DK Metcalf, Joe Burrow, Miles Sanders, Deontay Johnson, and Amari Cooper. Going back to that 12-team draft that I did yesterday, my real money league with my friends from home, Joe Mixon went at the end of the second round. This was the definition of of a home league. People picking like they have don't have a single fucking clue what football even means, right? Just the most random picks, running backs going super high, like, like just some boomer fantasy football draft. Again, can you draft two running backs in the first two rounds? Yes, I just did it. I just did it. But I'm not doing it if it's Christian McCaffrey and Joe Mixon with my first two picks. That is stupid. That is crazy. So we're back up on the clock here. Going to be looking for wide receiver because we got our one-two punch at running back. And I don't really think we need to take Damian Pierce in the fourth round here. I don't really think we need to go Damian Pierce in the fourth round here. I'm a huge Damian Pierce guy. I am infatuated with the idea that this guy is going to be a workhorse running back that you can get in the fourth round. The problem is we already paid very high price for Bijan and Jacobs. I would rather just start jamming wide receivers here. So best available, Debo, Godwin, DJ Moore, DeAndre Hopkins, and Drizzy Drake London. We're going to go ahead and go with Wiki Wiki DJ Moore here. I am a humongous DJ Moore fan. I've been banging the drum for DJ Moore for years. The problem with DJ Moore is that his quarterbacks have been a bunch of fucking idiots, right? Guys that can't read a defense to save their lives. You would be better off asking Floyd Money Mayweather to read a page of Cat in the Hat over a lot of those quarterbacks trying to read a defense, despite the quarterback woes of Baker Mayfield, Mono Man Sam, PJ Walker, Kyle Allen, host hype Cam Newton. DJ Moore was still successful. Now he wasn't able to reach his peak, right? the top of Mount Everest, the top 12, top five receiver that I know is inside of DJ Moore. I know deep down, DJ Moore has the ability to be that top 12, top five fantasy football receiver. The quarterback was just holding him back. Now, with Justin Fields under center in Chicago, Chicago, I think DJ Moore is going to shock the doubters that are like, Oh my god, I've drafted him before when he was in Carolina, Nick. He just isn't that good. Well, that assessment is terrible because he is good. Just the quarterback sucked. I don't think Justin Fields is the best quarterback in the NFL, but he's a lot more accurate than those guys. And we've already seen the rapport in training camp, in preseason, between Justin Fields and DJ Moore. They got that 5G LTE connection, and I fully expect my boy Wiki Wiki DJ Moore to have a great season. After DJ Moore, my boy Darren Waller comes off the board. DeAndre Hopkins, Debo, Samuel, Kenneth Walker, Damian Pierce, Brandon Ayuk, Lamar Jackson, Chris Godwin, Terry McLaurin, Jonathan Taylor, Justin Fields, and James Conner. Interesting to see Fields go ahead of Joe Burrow. I think in a lot of drafts now, people are just taking the more safe option over Justin Fields. Sometimes I'm even seeing Joe Burrow and Justin Fields go, or not Joe Burrow and Justin Fields, Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert the pervert go ahead of Justin Fields, but my assessment was actually just blatantly wrong because I forgot Joe Burrow went at the fourth pick or in the fourth round, but what I was saying still holds true, right? The idea of safety comes into mind with a lot of fantasy football players. Again, we talked about safety early on. There is inherently more risk when drafting a quarterback that rushes. They are going to put themselves into situations to get sent into Middle Earth by a defensive player. Joe Burrow, is he going to get hit? 100%. We've seen him get hit and get hurt and get hurt badly. But you're putting yourself in a much riskier situation when you are running directly at that fucking DB who has just sniffed some smelling salts and is looking at you like a fucking piece of cake. Right? Like a fat kid who loves cake. He's gonna... They're gonna hit you. And I love Justin Fields. I love Lamar Jackson. So I'm not too worried about the risk. I get the risk. I'm fine drafting them ahead of Joe Burrow. But some people like that safety. The, oh, you know what? Justin Herbert's gonna stay in the pocket. He's on the Chargers. This great offense in LA. He's safe. I'm gonna take him. Trevor Lawrence, safe. Jacksonville, great offense. I'm gonna take him. And again, I get that philosophy. I am just hunting for the upside. The crazy season where Fields is the QB1. Lamar is the QB1. 
I don't think that Burrow, Lawrence, or Herbert, the pervert, could be the number one quarterback because of their limited upside in the rushing game. Now, is it crazy to simulate to the end of the season and one of them is a QB1? I would say, no, it's not that crazy, but there is a much easier path for a guy that can rush for a thousand plus yards, get 10 rushing touchdowns like Fields of Lamar Jackson to leapfrog over Josh Allen, Pat Mahomes, and Jalen Hurts and potentially finish as the quarterback number one. I just think Joe Burrow, these other guys are the safer bets, right? The wrap a condom over your team, top six-ish quarterback weekly. And there is a place for that. To me though, I just want that crazy upside. It's not so early in the draft where you need that safety. So we got Jalen Hurts, B. John Robinson, Josh Jacobs, and Wiki Wiki, DJ Moore. If you guys have enjoyed thus far, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. I am a humongous Alexander Madison fan, but again, we need wide receivers, and we are going to go with Drizzy, Drake London. We are not because we already have B. John Robinson. This is a problem in fantasy football drafts that I run into all the time. I love B. John in the first round, and I love Drake London. The problem is I don't want two players in my starting lineup on a team that could be a complete and utter unmitigated disaster like the Atlanta Falcons. If I take Drake London in the fifth round, I'm fine with it. I would have just rather have drafted a different running back instead of Bijan, right? So we are going to dodge and weave there and go with Christian Watson instead. A lot of people really worried about Christian Watson as well because, oh my God, I don't know how good Jordan Love is going to be, Nick. Jordan Love isn't the best uh, quarterback on earth. I know he's not, but again, this is another guy who I think is a legitimate wide receiver in the NFL. I think Christian Watson is going to get at least top 18 quarterback play from Justin or Jordan Love, and that is going to be good enough for Christian Watson to succeed. Last year, Aaron Rodgers looked like a shell of himself, and Christian Watson was still feasting on a defense like Andy Reid feasts on Burger King after every single game. So Christian Watson... I believe in the talent, I believe in the skill set, and I believe more in Jordan Love than most people. After Christian Watson, Justin Herbert, the pervert, Drizzy Drake London, Tyler Lockett in my pocket skirt, George Kittle, Trevor Lawrence, Javon, Tay Williams, Mike Williams, TJ Hawkinson, Alexander Madison, and Christian Kirk. TJ Hawkinson has been doing a free fall in a lot of fantasy drafts. People like TJ Hawkinson, but I think people have started to realize what I've been saying all offseason long. Hawkinson is just like Lawrence or Herbert. They are the condom pick. You take them, you wrap the Durex, the Trojan around your team, they're safe. Is Hawkinson ever going to pull his pants down, take a deuce on the defense's chest, and drop like 30 fantasy points? Probably not. Could it happen once? Yes. Is it going to happen three or four times? Probably not. Whereas Kelsey, Pitts, Andrews, these other guys, they could have 25-plus point performances multiple times in the season. Hawkinson's just like a locked and loaded 10 points. Something to be said about getting that safety, but just not for me. After we went ahead and got Christian Watson, we are going to go back into the wide receiver category. Good thing we went quarterback early because the quarterbacks are coming off the board relatively quick. And now we've entered a range where it's like these guys all feel kind of similar. I'm a huge Deshaun Watson guy, but in reality, what's the difference in drafting Deshaun Watson in the 6th versus getting Tua in the ninth? Both kind of risky, but Tua goes three or four rounds later a lot of the time. So I would rather just wait, even though I love Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson in the eighth, very good. In the sixth, no bueno. We still don't have a tight end, but Goddard is another one of those guys that is basically just like Hawkinson. I like the tight end Goddard, but he has A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Swift, Gainwell, Penny, all these guys that are going to be getting touches around him. And in the red zone, Jalen Hurts can just dive it on in there himself, right? We saw it all last season. Just whoop, right through there. Touch the tip, just the tip, right over the fucking goal line. Touchdown. So, again, I like the player Goddard. He's safe. It's just not very exciting to me in the sixth round. If he falls to the seventh, sure, I'll go right ahead and take him. But in the sixth round... I just don't feel like I need that, if I'm being honest with you. So we're going to stay with the wide receivers here, get our flex here, and that is going to be Mr. Mike Evans. A lot of people are scared shitless to draft Mike Evans. I think Michael Pittman a little bit safer. Jahan Dotson even probably safer. But there is something about Mike Evans that makes me very, very excited. It is the fact that this man prints 1,000-yard receiving seasons, and I think Baker Mayfield might just be halfway decent might 
just surprise some people. A couple years ago, Baker was this hyped up quarterback coming out of college, and then he was the lord and the savior of the Browns franchise, their franchise quarterback. And then they flicked him off to the side. They say, I don't want you anymore. Flicked him off their finger like it was a fucking booger. And now he goes, he's passed around like a blunt at a party. And now he's the Bucks starting quarterback. Am I saying that Baker is guaranteed to succeed? No. I think that would be crazy to say. But what I will say is that I think Mike Evans is just so good. I'm willing to take that shot. When I draft Mike Evans, I definitely don't need him locked and loaded as my flex every single week, right? I want to have other options. But there is something to say about that upside. And there's also something to say about the fact that Tom Brady sucked absolute donkey cock at points last season, right? He was wide open multiple times and the ball would just go over him or under him. It was like, it was sad. It was sad to watch. Like, Mike Evans is literally, there is no one in the same stratosphere of the guy. But booty naked open, and the ball just sails over him. So I think that Mike Evans, again, Baker not the best passer in the NFL, but I think Mike Evans will actually be just fine. After Mike Evans, J.K. Dobbins, James let him cook, Kyle Pitts, DeAndre Swift, Alvin Kamara, Jahan Dotson, Cam Akers, Rashad White, Dalvin Cook, Jerry Judy, Hollywood, Brown, and Danny Dimes. So we're back up on the clock here, and we are going to stay with the wide receiver position. I do definitely like Dallas Goddard in the seventh round. I don't think he would be here, though, in a lot of drafts, and I do try to keep these mock drafts as realistic as possible. This is a 19 pick fall for Goddard. I just don't really see that happening. Again, if I was in a real draft, I'm pouncing on this instantly. But in a mock draft, I want to go ahead and try to keep things a little bit more realistic for you guys. It is possible that I could fall here. I'm not saying it's that crazy, but I just wouldn't do it here. Now, normally we are avoiding George Pickens, but I do want to get George Pickens on some of my teams because Kenny Pickett looked downright sensa sensational in the preseason. Now, something I talk about a lot, don't heavily overreact to the preseason, right? Is Kenny Pickett going to go out there and play as great as he played in the preseason? Probably not because he literally looked incredible. Bro was slicing and dicing his way through the defense like his name was OJ Simpson. But... Could Kenny Pickett be better than last year? Definitely, because Kenny Pickett literally looked like he had no idea what he was fucking doing last season. Running around like a chicken with his head cut off, except for the chicken had small hands like Kenny Pickett. So I think George Pickens is not a safe pick. He's a high upside player week in and week out. The fire cracker into your lineup. Deontay Johnson is safe. You know he's going to be seeing targets week in and week out and at a high rate. Pickens might get... Eight targets in one game, three or four in another, but he has that big play upside. He could get four targets in a game, four receptions, make one catch like Odell Beckham Jr. reaching back like 1-3 and getting 100 yards and a fucking touchdown. So Pickens is a really good player. I just worried early on in the offseason about him because I'm such a big Deontay Johnson guy, but getting a solid discount, Deontay Johnson went really high in this draft. We go ahead and get Pickens in the seventh round. After Pickens, Michael Pittman Jr., Deshaun Watson, Dickie Dak Prescott, Isaiah Pacheco, Brandon Cooks, David Montgomery, the 49ers defense, Brian Robinson, Antonio Gibson, and I want a bad bitch. Jordan Addison Ray, now it is time to get back into the running back room here because the running backs are flying off of the board like toilet paper when a disease hits the United States. So we are going to go ahead and get Khalil Herbert onto this team. I have been a Khalil Herbert advocate all offseason. We have successfully drafted a team of all guys that I have loved so far. I've been talking up Jalen Hurts as the QB1. I've been talking up Bijan Robinson as potentially finishing as the RB1. I've been talking up Josh Jacobs even when, oh my god, he's not going to come back and play. He's going to be fucking sitting on the bench. Yeah, okay. Jacobs. I've been talking about Wiki Wiki, DJ Moore, Watson. I even have been talking about Evans. Now, Pickens is a guy that I recently kind of flip-flopped on. Back in on Pickens, but Will Herbert's been my guy for a while. This guy's the RB1 on the the... The Bears. He just is. Now, 
Could Roshan Johnson work in? Definitely. But I think first crack at it week one up against the Green Bay Packers. Khalil Herbert is going to be getting that first carry. He has some receiving upside. We saw when David Montgomery was hurt last year that Khalil Herbert was an absolute animal like that Maroon 5 song. So I am a big fan of Khalil Herbert. I actually think Khalil Herbert was better than David Montgomery last year. The team just held on to David Montgomery because they drafted him so highly, right? And they didn't want to give the reins to Khalil Herbert. If they did do that, maybe the offense would have been a little bit more successful. I'm not trying to shit on David Montgomery because I actually really like David Montgomery this year in Detroit. But if you watched the games last year, it seemed like the offense had a little bit more juice, a little bit more oomph, as they say, when David Montgomery was in there. After Khalil Herbert, Samaj P. Ryan, Jackson Smith, Najigba, Cortland Sutton, A.J. Dillon, Michael Pittman, Michael Thomas, I mean, Slant Man, Zay Flowers, Sky Moore, Gabe Davis, the Eagles, Steelers, Dallas Goddard, and Rashad with two A's, Penny. Again, we already have Jalen Hurts, but now is the time where we need to get a tight end. One of the biggest issues with the AI on Fantasy Pros is taking tight ends. After Goddard goes and pits those like big tight ends, Fantasy Pros just struggles on when to take the next tight end. And sometimes you get Ingram as a large faller to pick 100. Not crazy for him to be available here. But if you want to imagine this isn't Evan Ingram and it's like Njoku or Fryermuth, go right ahead, right? I, I like them all pretty similarly, if I'm being completely honest with you. After we went ahead and got Mr. Eze, -E, Juju Smith-Schuster, Zach Charbonnet, Jalen Warren, Jamal Williams, Traylon Burks, Jacoby Myers, Jarek McKinnon, Damian Harris, Elijah Moore, and Odell Beckham Jr. Back up on the clock here. Not going to go with the second tight end because I'm pretty confident in Evan Ingram. And if he magically goes back to his old ways of just dropping every single ball thrown anywhere near him, if it hits him right in the hands. You remember back in the day? Back in the day, like we're talking about like 30 years ago, right? Just a couple years ago on the Giants. The ball would hit Evan Ingram right perfectly. In the webbing, Tucker would drop it like every single time. Just wasn't an issue last year in Jacksonville. I'm not drafting a second tight end. I'm definitely not drafting a second quarterback. If you pay up for a guy, one of these upper echelon quarterbacks, right, all the way down to Trevor Lawrence, there's no reason to take a second quarterback. No reason at all. So don't do that. You're just wasting a draft pick because you're never going to play. Like, even Hurts against a fucking colossally amazing, a Goliath of a defense. I'm not sitting Jalen Hurts to play Geno Smith or something like that. I'm just not doing it, so... That's kind of my thought process on that. Back to the wide receiver position here, because again, our wide receiver core, I believe that DJ Moore and Christian Watson are very safe, but there's a way the season plays out where that's not true. Maybe DJ Moore is just cursed like the Jets franchise, and maybe Jordan Love is just way worse than I thought, and Christian Watson ends up failing. So we are going to go wide receiver here. We're going to be taking more big upside fucking swings here. We're going with Rashad Master Bateman. Could be the receiver one on the Ravens. Could be the wide receiver three in terms of targets, right? Odell and Zay Flowers could surpass him. Rashad Penny, not Rashad Penny, Rashad Bateman has struggled to stay on the field. But like this says, this guy was looking like a breakout, the breakout campaign before he got hurt. So this is a guy that has shown us. He has the talent. We shall see if it actually ends up paying off this year and he doesn't get hurt because if he doesn't get hurt i think he does have a claim to the wide receiver one role in that baltimore ravens offense after bateman raheem mostert kenneth gainwell quinton johnston ezekiel elliott pat fryermuth romeo dobbs david and joku devin two chains to a tongue of Iloa, jeff wilson elijah mitchell and alan lazard do not j draft jeff wilson in the 11th round mans is on the ir and he has like a million different injuries so stay away from jeff wilson we are back up on the clock here I think we're going to go back with a wide receiver. There are still some running backs that I like, but I think we almost have to go running back here because I like these receivers. I don't really like a lot of these running backs. Like, sure, I like Roshan Johnson, but we drafted Khalil Herbert, and I don't want to draft his handcuff. I don't really like handcuffing, unless it's in the bedroom. Giggity. <laughs> Sorry, that was really funny to me. So we're going to go with Tank Bigsby here. Again, I have talked about this so many times. I don't believe in ETN as much as most people. I think Tank Bigsby is going to be taking some pass catching upside. I think he's going to be taking some goal line work. And if something was to happen to Travis ETN, Tank Bigsby would in instantly catapult into a guy that would be must start every single week. So after Tank Bigsby, Adam Thielen, Tyler Algier, Nico Cousin, let's go bowling. Collins, 
Kendra Miller, Zay Jones, Dalton Kincaid, Kadarius Stoney, Tyler Higby, Tyler, yeah, Boyd, and Jawan Johnson back into the wide receiver core here. Rondell Moore, Darnell, here comes the movie. Jameson Williams, Michael Gallup, DJ, Shark, do 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 baby, Shark. Shark, looking like he's going to be ready for week one. This Panthers offense is interesting because I think one of these guys is going to end up paying off as the wide receiver one in the offense. Question is, which one will it be? Will it be Chark? Will it be Mingo? Will it be Adam Thielen? We shall see. But we're going to go with Marvin Jones. And by Marvin Jones, I mean Marvin Mims, wide receiver of the Denver Broncos. I don't know why I thought about Marvin Jones. Probably because I looked at Jamison Williams' name and I started thinking about the Lions. And I have a deep, deep down love for my man, Marvin Jones. Talk about him for one second. I think Marvin Jones could be a sneaky play in like a 16-team league week one without Jameson Williams, but on like a 12-team league, you don't really need him. So Marvin Mims, the reason I like him is that Judy's injury might be very, very serious, right? Jerry Judy might be missing multiple games, and Marvin Mims was a guy that kind of looked buried in this depth chart, right? He's behind Sutton, probably behind, definitely behind Judy, Probably behind Tim Patrick, but then Tim Patrick gets hurt. And now, Judy's hurt. So now, Marvin Mims could be the receiver one in terms of targets for the first couple of weeks of the season without Jerry Judy. And again, I'm not necessarily the biggest believer of the Denver Broncos after the fact that they just completely murdered me. They dicked me down metaphorically last season. I do think that if there was anyone that could just turn this flaming pile of dog shit into a pristine franchise it would be Sean Payton. So after Marvin Mims, Anthony Richardson, Dante Foreman, Rondell Moore, A.A. Ron Rogers, Devin Singletary, Dalton Schultz, Tajay Spears, Chig, Jameson Williams, Roshan Johnson, and Cole Komet. Aaron Rodgers went in the fifth round of my draft last night. The fifth round to a Dolphins fan. Not even a Jets fan. Very, very crazy. It wasn't me. Nick, you fucking idiot. Why'd you take Aaron Rodgers in the fifth round? Um, so we are going to go with... Let's just go with another tight end here. We don't really need any of these running backs or wide receivers. I feel pretty confident in that. And I think you could pair another tight end with Evan Ingram. We're going to go with... Can't go with Sam Laporta because they have the same bye week. Let's go with... Go with Dolchich. Dolchich looked super... Why not again? Fuck it. We're not taking another tight end because I don't really want Gerald Everett on this team. So we'll just go with another receiver. More high upside. Let's go with Isaiah Hodgins, the potential wide receiver one for the New York football giants and Danny Dimes. Hodgins looked really good last year when he got the opportunity. So I'm shocked he goes this late. Still. He's another one of those guys that I've been banging the drum for all offseason and his ADP hasn't moved. Maybe one day... I will be um, big enough in the fantasy industry that when I talk up a player, they actually fucking move, right? No one's taking Isaiah Hodgins. He goes undrafted in some drafts. After uh, Isaiah Hodgins, Chuba Hubbard, Kenny Pickett, Kirko Chains. Did you guys watch that um, NFL like script video, like the joke that they made? And Kirk Cousins is like, big Kirko been dripping like this or something. And if you're like my age, you probably find that really funny if you're like, Probably even just like a couple years older than me. You probably thought that was the dumbest shit you've ever seen. After Kirk Cousins, Kirk Chains, Cordero Patterson, Jerome Fode, Gerald Everett, a bunch of kickers, a bunch of defenses. We're going to go with the top-ranked kicker here. I'm going to go with Bucker. And then we're going to go with the defense. For defenses, you want to draft the defense, playing a not-so-hot opponent week one. Doesn't matter about how good the actual defense is. I get the Broncos' defense is better than the Commanders' defense, but the Commanders play up against the Cardinals, and the Broncos play up against... The Raiders. Now, the Raiders, definitely not the hardest of opponent, but we have Josh Jacobs on our team. I'd rather stay away from that, and we'll go with the left hand up. Who are we? The Commanders up against whichever quarterback the Arizona Cardinals decide to roll out. So, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. To recap our team, we got a B+, plus, A+, plus in my heart. Our team is Jalen Hurts, B. John Robinson, Josh Jacobs, DJ Moore, Christian Watson, Evan Ingram, Mike Evans, the Commanders, Bucker, George Pickens, Khalil Herbert, Bateman, Bigsby, Mims, and Hodgins. Very touching that our team that we drafted here just for our final mock draft has so many of the guys that I just love. We got our guy Bijan, our guy Josh Jacobs, DJ Moore, Christian Watson, just guys that I have been screaming from the mountaintops for you guys to be drafting all offseason long. We got the boy Herbert who I've been talking about. 
Hank Bigsby. And we got those high upside players on the bench. I am very excited about this team. I am so excited for the football season to start. You know, in video games, you can like sim a couple days, like in Madden you sim a couple days. I wish I could just sim to Thursday and watch the game. I hope everyone, though, has a great Labor Day tomorrow on Monday. Rest in peace to Jimmy Buffett as well. I will not lie to you and tell you that I'm some big Jimmy Buffett guy, but he had some good music, so I do respect that. Rest in peace to him. Again, I try not to do that like when certain people die. Like, for instance, an artist like Jimmy Buffett, right? I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I was his biggest fan when I wasn't. A lot of people do that. Like a rapper dies. Oh my God, I was his biggest fan. You know, like three songs from him. I know like three songs from Jimmy Buffett, so not trying to fucking clout chase and be like, I was the biggest Jimmy Buffett fan. Feel bad for me. No, feel bad for him. He's the one who died. So rest in peace to Jimmy Buffett. At the end of the day, I love you guys all so much though. We recently hit 25,000 subscribers, like I said. We are close to 5 million views. It means the world to me, all the support we've seen. I'm so excited for week one. I'm so excited for what this season has to come. Um, shout out to my Dolphins going up against the Chargers week one. We're going to take those bastards down. Justin Herbert, the pervert, is going to get hit by a fucking loogie by my boy Tua Tonga Vailoa. So I love you guys. Hope you guys have a great one. Happy Labor Day weekend. And have a margarita for Mr. Jimmy Buffett. Love you guys. Have a great one. As always, good.